Um, first of all, please excuse the fact that I am currently sitting in an abandoned parking lot. However, I didn't think all of you thought my last name was Wa. My last name is not Wa. My, like, name is Spencer Hunt. Everything is literally making so much sense. Whenever anyone makes a video about me, they're always like, Spencer Wa. No, my last name isn't Wa. My last name is Hunt. I chose the username Spencewa because it sounds like you're making like a kissing noise with my name. You know the moi noise? Except I took out the M and made it like Spencewa. So it kind of sounds like my name, but like in kiss form. My last name is not Wa. My last name is not Wa. I am, it's like it's making so much sense. I cannot tell you how many videos I've seen of people being like, Spencer Wa. No, it's not, no, it's Spence Wa. Guys, I can't do this right now. I have been lied to my entire life. Growing up, my mom always told me that I was German, Irish, Swedish, and Italian. Like, pretty much nothing else. And about, like, three weeks ago, I took a 23 in me, and I got my test results back. Let me, let me just fucking show you. First off, I'm French. I didn't even know I was French. But, uh, it makes almost 50% of my DNA with Germany. I'm also 18.4% Italian, specifically Sicilian. So I saw that coming. However... I'm only 0.6% Irish and British, but I'm 27.5% Turkish. I'm literally Turkish, specifically in the Eastern Providence of Turkey. Also, I found out that I'm related to King Richard III. I don't know what that means, but Great Britain, run me my fucking check. Um, for all the kids who had book bags like these in middle school, you know, like the rolly book bags where like you lift up the handle and roll it around in the hallway. How are you doing mentally right now? Because like, I just feel like there is no way that you're fine. Anyone who had to endure dragging around a book bag in middle school, I just, I don't feel like you're okay mentally. And the only reason I ask is because in case it's not already evident, I was one of those kids. And honestly, I'm not doing too well. So I just wanted to like check in with you guys and, <laughs> and just see how you're doing. People keep telling me that I look straight with my new haircut. So I'm going to try to act straight as well and see how that works out for me. Yo, dog, did you see that? <laughs> ew, 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 ew. Okay, I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. Yo, dog, did you see that? <laughs> no! One more time. One more fucking time. Yo, dog, did you see that Lakers game last week? Shit was wild. No, that was so... Ugh! It was so disgusting. Maybe I'll sound more straight if I try to sound like a news anchor. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing today? I... Ugh! I'm never doing that again. This felt... Oh, my God. That's so disgusting and gross and disgusting and gross. I feel like the more I try to sound straight, the less straight I sound. So, moral of the story is I, I can't fucking do it. I can't do it. Um, let's take a look at this. I just announced Texas is open 100%. Everything. I also ended the statewide mask mandate. <laughs> Interesting. Could you care to explain this? Yeah, um, let's look at these statistics, because they are not looking too pretty. Um, and would you also like to explain the 44,000 deaths that have occurred in Texas due to the coronavirus? Look, I am not saying that we should get rid of Texas, but I feel that we should all come together as a country and raise funding to put a glass dome over Texas and just let survival of the fittest and natural selection take its course. Because at this point, at this point, I'm fucking done. I am so done. Just put a glass dome over them, let them fucking do what they want to do, and while we all thrive and live our lives when the coronavirus ends, they can stay in their homes roasting oranges to get their taste back. That is all. Please, please stop. No, no flash photography. Please, please leave me alone. Please stop. Please, please stop. Oh my God, this is literally, this is insane. You need to stop. Please, get the cameras out of my face, please. So I know there was that trend going around where everyone talked about their wedding rules, but I've decided to also talk about my 21st birthday rules. Because if there is one celebration that is equally as important as my wedding day, it is the day I am legally allowed to get fucked 
Ah! Rule number one is I will not be the designated driver. In fact, there is no designated driver because we are pulling up to the club in a fucking limo. With that being said, if you are attending my 21st birthday party, you are required to get fucked the fuck up. Rule number three is I will be controlling the music at all times. Do not think for a fucking second that you will ever get the aux cord because it will be mine for the night. Rule number four, if you're going through a breakup, don't talk about it at my party because I will ask you to leave. Rule number five is you must wear the most scandalous clothing you have at home. We're going to the club, not a fucking funeral. Lastly, if you look better than me, I will ask you to go home. It's my night. All eyes should be on me. Thank you. Um, I'm getting real and I will tell you why. I was literally talking about this with my friends today, but why the f do we spell Wednesday as Wednesday, but pronounce it as Wednesday? Like, this shouldn't make me as mad as it does, but it's really f***ing complicating when you think about it, because you say Wednesday, but when I'm writing out Wednesday, I have to think of it in my head as Wednesday. Like, why couldn't we just make this easy? You know, like, why couldn't we have just said, we say Wednesday, so let's spell it like Wednesday. But no, someone f***ing somewhere and was like, mm, we say Wednesday, spell it like Wednesday. Like that sh literally just gets on my nerves. Like why do we look at it and say Wednesday when it's spelled like Wednesday? Like that, like that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me and it hurts my brain. Fix this sh I honestly hate when guys are like, you'll never get like this again. Like, are you sure, babe? Are you absolutely sure because i have one in my closet that has 40 different modes and it vibrates and i'm pretty sure i can work that sh better than you can work your own so please change the f***ing narrative because now you look dumb hey what y'all get for number 12 i got 18 oh, i got 9.5 hey everyone ever since i dyed my hair black i have gotten a lot of mixed reviews but I'm going to have to politely ask all of you to please stop calling me the mom from the Lorax and Gibson from Ant Farm. I see how the hair is similar with Gibson, just... <laughs> <laughs> just not the face. The hair is there, not the face. As of the mom from the Lorax, yeah, no, you are completely off. I don't see it at all. Overall, <laughs> please... <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> I am going to start considering this verbal harassment. I've seen a lot of people on TikTok saying the rules that they have for their wedding. So I'm going to do mine as well. Rule number one is my husband must cry while I'm walking down the aisle. If he's not crying while I'm walking down the aisle, I will turn my ass around and walk down the aisle again until he cries. Two, no plus ones. I invited you and you alone for a reason. If you want to bring your best friend, leave them in the fucking parking lot. Three, don't take away my spotlight. If you get a text during my wedding that your mom passed away, tell everyone after my wedding, please. Four, everyone must pregame before my wedding. If you're not tipsy while I'm getting married, I don't want you there. Five, you're required to bring me gifts. And by gifts, I mean money. Six, if you don't RSVP, do not come. Seven, be on time. If you're not on time, I'm literally locking you out of my wedding because if you walk in and interrupt my vows, I will punch you in the face. Eight, if your phone goes off while I'm getting married, I will grab it from you and burn it. And nine, if you have a toddler, get a fucking babysitter. Leave those bitches at home. This is a loaded question, so I'm gonna try to answer this as plainly as possible. I feel like a lot of the time, people base their confidence off of their appearance. Like, some people are like, I have to do my makeup to feel more confident in myself. Or I have to dress nice to feel more confident in myself. When in reality, like, you really don't. The reason why a lot of people just focus on their physical appearance to feel confident is because they rely on the validation of others to make themselves feel confident. Like they rely on people saying, wow, you look really nice. Or wow, you look really beautiful today. The minute you stop caring about what other people think of you, regardless if it's negative or positive, you will gain confidence. Because you're no longer relying on others to make you feel confident, you're only relying on yourself. So instead of relying on other people to make you feel confident, start relying on yourself. They don't pay your bills. Um, fun fact, I've only actually ever lost my voice two times from not being sick. The first time was with my best friend Layla in high school. Me and Layla both liked choking. So during lunch, we would just like 
choke each other. It was like a fun thing we would do because you know, like who doesn't like being choked? And one time we both got carried away and choked each other a little too hard. And we both lost our voices for like a week. Second time I've ever lost my voice was my friend who was practicing jujitsu on me. He had me in a headlock and he actually bruised my larynx. I literally could not speak for almost a month. But other than that, me screaming has like no impact on my voice whatsoever. And I don't know why. I think my body's just used to it because I scream all the time because I literally want to die all the time. Uh, but yeah, the more you know, I'm really glad I could answer this question. Um, there are a lot of things that he does that I love. Uh, he calls me before he goes to sleep so he can fall asleep on FaceTime. Sometimes when he don't fall asleep on FaceTime, he'll FaceTime me in the morning so he can tell me that he's on his way to work. Uh, whenever he's driving the car, he'll, like, massage my head like he'll pet my hair. When he hugs me, he'll, like, smell my clothes or smell my hair because it smells good. When we're having, like, a casual conversation and he looks at me and he's like, I am so in love with you. I love it when I make him laugh because I love his laugh for some reason. He gives me like random nicknames sometimes and he'll be like, hi, onion. When we're like cuddling, he'll like wrap his arms and legs around me. So he's kind of like a huge fluffy koala on my body. If we're driving somewhere and we're sitting in the back, he'll like lie down on my lap. Whenever he like talks about his future and he like always includes me in his future. Like he'll be like, oh, when we have our apartment together in the future. I don't know, but those are just some things. <laughs> this is actually a really good question because I remember when I first started falling in love with Louie and it was in early December. It was a few days before he had asked me to be his boyfriend. So me and Louie started talking in October and in late November, early December, my friend had passed away. And the day I found out that my friend passed away, I called Louie crying on the phone. And out of nowhere, Louie was like, Spencer, I'm really sorry. Like, I'm getting a call from one of my friends. I'm going to go hang out with them for a bit, but I'll call you back later. And I was like, okay, like, have fun with your friends. About 40 minutes goes by and I get a FaceTime call from him. And he told me that he was outside of his friend's house, but the door looked different. And he turned the camera around and he drove to my house. I got in the car and he had bought all my favorite candies. <laughs> And then we drove around for like an hour and he just like listened to me talk, cry. We listened to music. And that's when I knew I was like, I am 100% falling for him because he's just so fucking amazing. Like he's amazing. I've decided to do that love wheel trend where it tells you your love life every month of the year. And I'm going to start with this month, February. So this one is February. No, no. Fuck that stupid fucking love wheel. It is not real. I am done. It's fake. It's fake. It's fake. It's fake. It's fake. And if that turns out to be real, which it is not, someone will have hell to pay. I really can't give you a full blown opinion that I have on Harry Styles. But what I can do is show you how I would react if I ever saw him in person. Okay, so imagine me, I'm in Los Angeles, I'm walking down the streets of Hollywood Boulevard, and I turn to my left and I see Harry Styles. I have three options. First option, run into oncoming traffic and pass away. Second option is have severe heart palpitations, have a heart attack, and pass out on the fucking ground. And then my third option is this. And then I would peel my face off. Would Harry Styles run away from me? Absolutely. He would probably call the cops on me, call me crazy. But it's really not my fault that he has such a strong impact on me. So yeah, I can't really give you my full-blown opinion on Harry Styles, but I really hope that answer was efficient enough for you to understand how strongly I feel about that man.